Um, I am Richard Winter, and I teach uh, counseling and psychotherapy at Covenant Theological Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I have been working in the psychological field most of my life. And it's a great privilege to be here with you, Liviu Mokan. Um, and uh, you, as I understand it, are an artist. I have seen your work over the years and have loved it. And uh, it's an honor to be talking here with you about some of your work that we, we have here. And there is much more that maybe you can tell us about. Um, and so you, uh, you were born and raised, I think, and live in Transylvania. You have exhibited your art around the world. And there are many people who are beginning to get to know it. I understand you were raised in a Christian family uh, and in the church. And um, <clears throat> have you always had a calling to be an artist? It was absolutely interesting how God called me to be a, an artist in his kingdom because I was born in 55 in the full communist regime in Romania. So my parents were farmers, poor. We lived in a countryside. And uh, the communists took, confiscated every good that my parents uh, got. So we were three children. Uh, but uh, the communist regime took the lands of my parents, uh, the animals, um, the chariots, everything, you know. So then the first family in that village was my family that, uh, that uh, were believers, and they got an understanding of the days, of the period, of the history. So. Uh, the Holy Spirit in their minds uh, inspired them, and they said this, I quote, because from now on we cannot give land to our children, we will move in the city and we'll give them education. So when I was six and a half, I got in town in Cluj-Napoca, Transylvania, and my parents, that were simple but extremely wise, they asked us children, what do you feel you would like to, to do in life? And now imagine that little kid, six years old, saying, I want to do art. No relationship with his background, with his education, with the environment. It came out from blue, you know. And my parents put me in art schools from the beginning, all the schools that existed for children, for the high school, fine arts, uh, so on. Uh, uh, and this is what I've done all, all my life, because it was in me, it was a calling that came out in a miraculous way. So a calling, a sort of gift out of the blue, but out of that extraordinary background. That's a wonderful story. And, and what, have you, what have you been, you, you've made things over the years, what more recently have you been producing? What works of art have you done? For me, the studio is the temple where I meet God. The working table is my altar. And the objects, the sculptures, are my prayers. I work with great joy as an expression of, uh, of my relationship with my father. In fact, daddy, the heavenly daddy is playing with me, his kid, and the sculptures are our toys. So he works with me. He's such a great sculptor. And I'm a little kid, a little assistant in his studio. And I, I clean the floor, and I ask him, what you want me to do, master? You know, 
So why I mention that is that my work is my way to relate to God. The sculptures are my prayers. They are my questions. They are my training. Uh, they are my joy. Uh, they are the way I discover his uh, creation, different materials, different forms. You know. A profession is a fantastic window uh, through, through the doors or uh, the walls of, of my studio up to, to heaven. So I can understand through this specific of, of my profession, I can understand God, life, myself in a, in a deeper way. And also through this little window of my profession, God can speak to my heart more specifically. You know? So I work in series. I take a subject from the Bible that always is over my little head. Then I try to understand what God says about that subject. For instance, resurrection. How can I understand that? So I start working, creating different objects on that theme. During this process, I pray, I think, I read, I talk with people. So I try to, to understand not only with my mind, but to understand it with my heart, to love God through that piece of revelation, you know, to, to, to love his, his goodness and, and majesty and so on. You know. Okay, so I develop series and I have different series on different subjects of the Bible. The most recent that you were asking about, uh, it's called, um, as you uh, can see here, uh, archetypes. And the, uh, they are the five solas of the Reformation. Uh, they are uh, this uh, amazing, uh, important uh, theological subject that, that I try to illustrate. Yes. Okay. So, can, well, can you give an example of, say, one of the solas of the Reformation and what you have done with that? Yeah, uh, they are uh, sola gratia. And for this, I made uh, the Lamb of God. Now, uh, this Lamb is created by eyes. Because the Lamb of God gave everything to us. His blood, his body. Take, take everything I, I, for free. I don't ask anything. But I'm God. I'm watching you. How do you react to, to, to all of this, to my love, you know? So are, are all your works on biblical themes? Nothing else is important for me. Jesus Christ is the essence of my life, and the Bible is um, the... the uh, pool uh, where I swim just for joy and, uh, and uh, get some uh, food for my soul, you know. So all the sculptures, in fact, are my, my questions and my dialogue with God. Right. And some of them are not very obviously biblical, like your vertical library is a wonderful image. Um, but um, people wouldn't obviously immediately relate it to, to the Bible when they see it. Uh, it's, it's not necessary to, to get immediately. But if they meditate a little bit, if they pay a bit of attention, then they, they will get to questions like why vertical knowledge, a library being... Uh, a, a symbol, an extraordinary symbol. And, and you have done some in cities, la very large sculptures, 
to commemorate certain events. Am I, am I right in that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah God wanted me to make uh, some of these, uh, and uh, each one is Christ-centered, even if it's abstract and modern, but those that have the language, uh, the visual language, they, they get it. Uh, and the regular people, if stay there and, and meditate, uh, can, uh, can get deeper. For instance, uh, I, I won the competition f to create the memorial for the anti-communist revolution in my city. So the, the monument is called Shot Pillars. It's staying in the heart of the city, and it speaks about the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But in what way? In the way that I try to represent in a uh, quite abstract form the human, humans on the sidewalk. They are walking on the sidewalk, no pedestal for them, you know. And they are shot, the wounds are there, as the wounds were there in, in Jesus' body, you know. Because these people in my town were killed. They were 27 people shot, mostly in their heads, and mostly young people. They were the children of, of our town that raised uh, against communism, and they were shot like, like dogs, you know. So, um, uh, commemorating them, I could express death only, as some other participants did. We, we were 24 sculptors in this competition. Uh, and the place number two in this competition was taken by a, a sculptor that represented uh, a young person getting the bullet, you know, dying. So I did the same, these uh, human abstract forms have the wounds, the marks of the bullets, but they are not laid down, they are, they are not horizontal, they are like Jesus Christ resurrected with those wounds. So they walk on the sidewalk, you know. So I express their uh, the, the main message of the gospel that we will resurrect, we don't die forever. Those people did not die, they are alive. In an so the, the biblical themes come through in everything that you do, however abstract or realistic it is. And we, I would love to continue to talk about your works of art, but let me ask you a few other questions to, to help us Christians. Um, why, why do you think that art is so important for us in life? Because God is beautiful. God is beauty. In the Bible, we have that splendid text about the Lord Jesus Christ that says, you are the most beautiful person on earth. Uh, God is beautiful. Unfortunately, we, the evangelicals, we lose this dimension of God. We are not preoccupied of art and beauty. It's, it's a loss, a big loss for us, especially in Europe, where art and beauty were in the whole history and are so important and so, so efficient, so powerful. And we evangelical don't 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 have that. So, what what happens is that we lose an important aspect of of uh, God's, God's uh, person and and uh, an uh, uh, attribute of God. That is why we don't make our churches beautiful and our homes. Uh, we don't have this preoccupation, which God himself had in a fantastic matter from the beginning when he was talking with Moses to build the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. 
he asked uh, Bezalel, the, the artist that was making all of this, to do things for beauty, colors, shapes, sculptures, paintings, textiles, or fervories, uh, potteries, gold, uh, splendors, stones that were shining there, precious stones just to reflect uh, light. The same uh, God did uh, uh, for the temple in Jerusalem. Good uh, smelling wood. Uh, that when you when you got there in that in that space you felt how God smells, and you touched uh, those uh, lambs there, uh, the sacrifices. Uh, uh, you he you heard the music in a great great manner. You know, uh, you saw all all what is going on. The, these uh, rituals and uh, art forms. Imagine that God was meeting the great priest among two sculptures. On the top of the tabernacle, they, they were two angels with, the, with huge wings. And that was between those two angels was the place where the, the great priest put the blood of the lamb. Jesus Christ was there. So God met Israelites in an exhibition. <laughs> so there is so much in scripture about art. What, and we lost all of this. So, so what, what has the church's attitude been to you as an artist? I suffered a lot. And we, Christian evangelical artists, suffer a lot. Uh, because our dear brothers and sisters that we decided to, to be uh, to stay with them. I am a Baptist for 40 years, you know. So I stay with them, but they accept us as Christians, but not as artists, because this is a funny bird, you know, to be an artist, you know. It's useless, it's sinful. We, we create idols, yeah? In the same time, the world, the non-believer, the professional uh, group, accept us as artists, but not as Christians. We, we can be good as artists, but it's old stuff, you know, to be a, a Christian, not something new and modern. So, so do, does it matter to you whether you are called a Christian artist or an artist who is a Christian? It's very important. I consider myself a Christian artist because the first one expresses my cosmic status. This is what I am. I am a son of God. I am a Christian. Second is very important, but is the second is what I do, not what I am. My profession, which is very important, and of course they are related in a way or another, but one is more important than the other. Because today I can paralyze, for instance, uh, not be able to be a sculptor anymore, but my values, my, my value as, as, as a human, uh, remains forever. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. So, so how do you think, uh, how can you, how can we encourage Christians to accept the arts? And do you know of churches that ha are doing this? And what does that look like? I think we, uh, we are right now in this uh, period of history, after five e uh, years of uh, reformation, in, in uh, an interesting uh, changing uh, uh, moment um, of the, the attitude of evangelical Protestant church toward art and culture. I think the phenomena st uh, started 
God started, of course, uh, through Francis Schaeffer and, and this uh, theoretical movements. And now, more and more evangelical artists are all over the, uh, the earth. In almost every country, you uh, hear about a little evangelical artist group. So God, God makes, uh, makes changings uh, right now. Uh, you know, that was one of my questions, naughty question to, to God many, many years. Uh, the question was, Lord, why did you make me an artist in a Protestant church? You know, and, and I was quite uh, confused and angry, you know. But uh, why well, you didn't make me a Catholic to do something in Rome, then millions of Asian people would come and, and watch, watch the gospel. You know? But I, I understand now that he, he wanted me to be a Christian artist in this environment because this is uh, the, the need of, of uh, our church our movement. It's, it's a need to, to come back to the beauty and truth. Uh, so there are already some churches, evangelical churches, that are ugly as a, uh, architecture, that are nothings, you know, from an artistic point of view. But they started to enjoy having uh, an art object, not for long, for a Sunday, that would illustrate the sermon. <laughs> but it's, it's something good. I, I, I put art objects again and again in different churches. And we are in my town in Cluj, a, a group of Christian artist friends from different churches and different denominations. Uh, and God is using us in different churches to create something here and there uh, for, for the church. And people are a little bit more interested uh, about that. But let me say it in this environment. We brought some art objects because I, I feel obliged f f uh, uh, by God to, to help my dear sisters and brothers from the evangelical uh, movement uh, to, to get uh, a bit of attention to, to beauty. So we brought here, in front of this uh, main hall, uh, some art objects. One of them has even um, uh, 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 illumination, so it's, it's very obvious, you know. I stay there in, in the lobby and watch 800 people passing by, 800, and maybe two, three stops. They, we don't have that attraction for beauty, you know. We have a, a, a very uh, big attention for, for sounds, for words. For sounds in music, uh, very good for words, because our theology is that the salvation come by hearing. And we don't understand that when you see something, you can hear. Yeah, that, that what you see is beautiful in its, intrinsically beautiful in itself, but it also expresses some, for you, some deeper truth that is speaking to people. So how, how do you think um, non-artists can, when they are awakened to the, this reality, this need, how can they support you? How can they support artists, Christian artists, in general? First is to let God be God in his fullness, in their understanding, to, to, to see that God is interested in beauty. So they can help us if they, can, they, if they help themselves to have a, a, a broader understanding of God. Because now we Protestants have a limited understanding of God from this point of view. Yeah. 
Judea. We don't see uh, uh, what an interest God has for beauty. We don't watch the nature, his creation that is so beautiful. Yeah, and the temple for, in Jerusalem that I was talking about, or the tabernacle, that were full of, of beauty, you know. So first, they could reconsider their theology. Second is um, to, uh, to pay attention or, or to, to be interested to learn. We want to serve. This is, this is our heart. We, through the gift we receive from God in this hostile environment that is, are our churches. We want to serve through what we understand. We understand a little bit, but it's something very specific about God and, and his uh, character and his attributes you know, and his creation. So we want to serve people. If they would uh, like to learn something about God, we would love to serve them through what we can. So we don't talk about money or to buy objects necessary, but to, to have an interest uh, for decorating uh, the church or illustrating uh, uh, theology. In, in fact, art, uh, if we call it Christian art, or art, good art with a Christian message, this is, what I, I would like, this is how I would like to define Christian art. Good art with a true message. Uh, so, uh, art, this kind of art, in fact, is theology. Not only words are theology, so, but so. visual arts, it's theology expressed in image, in another language. So, do you see a value in abstract art that doesn't have an obvious message? in it, just an expression of beauty, of color, of shape, of form. Yours are, seem to have a strong message in them of what you believe about life and the, the big questions of life. Yeah, uh, of course. Beauty in itself, it's a value. It's a value. We neglect it. So, if an artist creates something beautiful, that is good. In fact, if from this point of view, beauty is the truth. The lie is death, corruption, violence, all, all those uh, uh, negative expressions of Satan that can be expressed, and they are expressed in all forms of art. So there are expressions so far that are beautiful, they have the beauty, but the message is the lie, not the truth. Yeah. So beauty in itself has a value because that is from God. Even if you use it in a bad manner, you have a bad message, the beauty in itself comes from God and that is what will remain. Uh, on, on, uh, uh, on this planet, all the, the expressions of uh, beauty and truth and all the other ones will, will be cleaned up. That, that will be the, the, uh, the apocalypse. But, but some people might think you are saying that an artist can only express very obvious Christian themes or beautiful things. But would you think that an artist could, could express in his work something of the brokenness of the creation and, and the, the pain of a broken creation? I mean, that comes through, I think, in some of your big city memorial sculptures, the pain of what has been done to, to, to people. If you put only the good side of this world, uh, it's a lie. It does not reflect reality. So the bad aspects like death, shadows, night, black, darkness, suffering, have to be there to be expressed, but 
from the Christian point of view, this is the minor theme of our world. The major theme is the beauty, the truth, the victory of God. The redemption, the redemptive, the redemption. active part. Yeah. So this is a Christian point of view that have to be expressed completely. In fact, this is uh, how we express Friday and Sunday. Friday is there with the death, the darkness, the shaken, the, so, the blood and all, all of this is there. It's real. But it's not only that. And this is the good news. Sunday is coming. So both of these have to be expressed because this is the full uh, expression of, of Christ's revelation, death and resurrection. And the main theme, the victory, is of the resurrection, not, not of them. So has, has your, your work as a Christian artist, has that affected your relationship with non-Christian artists? How do they see it? Uh, now I have the privilege uh, at, at this uh, moment of my life, I'm 63, uh, that uh, my work that, that try to be as good as I am able is respected by, by my colleagues. So they pay attention to what they do, they know very well what they do, and uh, guess what? They accept our, my invitations or my wife and my uh, invitation at home, so non-believer artists come to our home and we drink a glass of wine and talk and uh, have very good time together. And they accept to come to us, even if they know so well that we are Christians. Yeah. So they have a respect for what I do and, and the respect for, for uh, us as uh, uh, humans, because maybe, maybe a, a, the reason is uh, that uh, I, I try to be excellent in my work, to do as good as possible, because quality is a Christian message in itself, as beauty is a Christian message in itself. But uh, uh, also, of course, God put me not only in the evangelical church, he put me also among my non-Christian uh, uh, artist uh, group. So I, I, I'm very happy to be a friend of, of these both categories and don't, uh, uh, not getting uh, uh, involved in any uh, of these in a formal way. I, I, I don't want to belong to a structure uh, in, in an active way, you know. I belong to both of them, but I don't uh, put my life in, in serving a structure, professional or... Uh, and uh, that's a wonderful thing that you have gained respect in that way. And obviously, the cities that have your sculptures in the middle of them, large sculptures, have respect you a lot as an artist. Uh, in the uh, 25th of June, so very soon, uh, they let it me make uh, an exhibition uh, in the heart of the city, and the mayor hall gave me a, a lot of money to... In which city is this? In my city, in Cluj-Napoca. Oh. And then we will pack this after about uh, 20 days. We will pack the object and uh, went with them to Cambridge in England. And these are the five pieces in relation to the Reformation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, that you talked about earlier. And... and um, in your work, there is a wonderful creativity in it and beauty. There's also sometimes a little tinge of humor, uh, which may be more than a tinge of humor, but I love the, the way you talk about what you will have on, in, on your grave. Can you, can you tell us about the little flag? <laughs> you know a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I wrote the first page of my testament. In fact, it's the only one yet. Uh, and I asked my children to put me in the coffin and in the ground 
wearing a, carrying a flag of victory in my hands. So I have uh, that flag made for, year, for several years already, and I wrote that testament. I talked with them, and I gave them instructions how to make a larger coffin that I will not say this way, but this way, so it has to be larger, yeah. So I hold that flag, so the flag will come from my hands through the coffin, through the ground, outside, and there, outside, on the flag is written, resurrection. I am waiting for them. I am waiting for it. I know it will come. I am a seed that dies in order to resurrect. Not die to disappear. Die to rest, to wait for the morning, to wait for the eternal spring. That's, that's such a great picture. I love it. And, and talking about seeds, you have uh, done a lot of work on seeds. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That is the largest series of, of, of uh, my work because it's the most interesting and uh, uh, complex subject of the revelation, uh, resurrection. And I love I love the subject, I, I love the perspective. This brings us humans the biggest hope possible. This is the biggest hope. All the other ones are very good hopes, and we live second by second by, by hope. I think you, you have the hope that we will finish this interview soon. <laughs> I want to keep going, <laughs> but we have to finish soon, yes. So all the time we hope something, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. But this hope for eternal life, for getting out and meet the Savior, it's, it's the, the greatest aspect of the revelation of the good news that God gave us because it's the most motivating to live this life in a certain way. If we know that we will be judged and we will be rewarded and we will be alive for eternity, then that will affect our values, our, uh, our daily life. Mm -hmm. So these seeds are often little seeds that have a lot above them. And um, as, we, as we get near the end of our time together, are there any of these pieces that you have here that you would like particularly to, to tell us about? <clears throat> Why not, of course. Um, let's see <laughs> which one. Okay, maybe this is uh, the simplest and, and more clear. Uh, it's a kind of leather. The title of this work is uh, uh, After the Last Step. So it's a leather going and going and, uh, and rotating, so it's a kind of uh, uh, life uh, that it has, uh, like all the plants, uh, you know, grow, having a, a movement, they are alive. So it, we don't talk about um, regular uh, uh, leather, a wooden leather, for instance, that takes you, or a metal one that takes you from one floor to another one, but it's an, a, living, a living leather. And then at, at the end of, of this destiny of a human, the leather that you step uh, on day by day, there, there is a crown that is waiting for you. And now, if, the, if this is uh, the final of our talk, I would like to, to share with you uh, the inspiration behind. I mentioned before that the way the Lord Jesus Christ died, from a visual point of view, this verticality is the most powerful visual image possible for this world. Because 
this vertical, the, the, the wood, the cross, links the earth with heaven. It's a bridge. This is what Jacobs have seen in his dream. Mm -hmm. He was sleeping, he was horizontal, and then he has seen a ladder that went up, and God, with his great humor, great, in, infinite humor, represented himself, the infinite God, represent he, himself like a little icon on the top of the ladder, waiting for Jacob. Come, come, come. Step by step, the angels will come down to help you, will come up to inform me what you need, and I will send them back uh, to you. So you come. Now what Jacobs have seen in that vision was Jesus Christ on the cross, resurrected. Jesus Christ, vertical. So... Uh, for a scientist like myself, who has a poor imag creative imagination, maybe compared with you, how do these images come to you? Do they come to you in dreams, in moments of meditation, or do they just emerge as you work, when you're working on a piece? Can you give us some sense of what it's like living in your head and how they come out? I'm sorry at the final of this uh, talk to disappoint you because I don't have an answer. Well, maybe that's, that is an because answer. Mm -hmm. It's so complex, you know. It, it's a matter of, of a relationship, of a love, of a uh, play, you know, of, of a game uh, with my daddy. So I, I, I have no idea. They come in very different ways. I don't have a receipt. To know, recipe it, that this is my way to create it. It's a dance. It's my tango with God, you know. And they come in, in, in very different ways, you know. And, and is there anyone in your own family who has a similar inspiration, imagination, gift? God gave to, to all of us in, in, uh, in the family the uh, gift of creativity, uh, but in different uh, areas uh, of life, not uh, in fine arts. But all of our children are creative, my wife included. She's very creative, and all three of our children. For instance, one, one of them is a musician. Uh, he, he plays French horn. And he loves it, and he's uh, creative by creative by nature, you know. Yeah. And uh, this is David, and Paul uh, builds uh, sound systems, and he creates everything: the boxes for the speakers. Uh, so he has he created the factory. Very very creative, and he builds sculptures that sound. He's better than I am. His sculptures sing, you know, the, the speakers. Uh, then uh, Emma, our daughter, uh, 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 cooks uh, uh, cakes, uh, and she, she cre uh, on a professional level, she has a, a little laboratoire, uh, and uh, her, her uh, cakes are pieces of art. They are so beautiful, with fruits, with colors. So she's a better sculptor than I am because people eat her sculptures. <laughs> they eat it as well. Yeah, these would be a little indigestible, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Indeed. Well, Livio, it's been a delight. And, and there are uh, books here of pictures of your work that are beautiful. Um, there's a book of your pillars and seeds here. Um, and I hope that people will get a chance to see some of your exhibitions. But thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your life and your work uh, with us today. 
Thank you very much. And my dream is that people that you are talking about will see a little bit more about God.